Decision making can be a very challenging section, but just like any other section in the UCAT, it's very possible to improve your scores dramatically, provided you take the most effective approach to your preparation. In this video, I'll share my top tips for preparing and how to succeed on the decision making section of the UCAT. So it's made up of 29 questions, which you'll have to answer in 31 minutes. The questions are very problem solving based with some maths too, and some questions may require some higher level complex thinking based on the information provided. It's very important to have a systematic approach when tackling questions in the decision making section of the UCAT exam. Now there are several quite different types of questions within this section of the UCAT and each of them require different strategies in tackling them. Like all other sections, it's really important to first of all understand the different question types. So I would recommend using your UCAT question bank, whether it be Medify, MedEntry or any other UCAT question bank and go through and familiarize yourself with the different types of questions and try to figure out any strategies that you could use in tackling them. Creating a solid step-by-step -step process on how you would approach each different question style is something I would definitely recommend. And by practicing this repeatedly, by doing lots and lots of questions, you'll only get better and faster at answering the question. For example, for some of the logical puzzle questions, you can start off, of course, by reading the information given in a question, and then following that, you could jot down any key details on your whiteboard in a sort of systematic method. For example, if you're ranking people or matching different people to items in a question in one of these puzzles, it can be really useful to help, you know, visualize the information given. So developing systematic approaches to each of the different question styles will really be beneficial for your preparation. Additionally, there are hundreds of videos on Medify, MedEntry and even YouTube on tackling specific different question types on, on all the different sections of the UCAT. So this can be really helpful in helping you kind of find a technique that works best for you. As I'll say with any UCAT section, the key is practice. Ensuring you are repeatedly, consistently answering questions is the key to mastering the UCAT. As with anything, the more practice you do, the better you'll become. Now a key tip, this is something that people really do tend to neglect when preparing for the UCAT and it's to learn from your mistakes. Once you complete a batch of questions, whether it's timed or untimed, take the time to go over the questions that you got wrong and understand why you got them wrong. Look at the correct answer and the reasoning behind it and understand why that's the correct answer. Reflect on why you got the question wrong. Did you misread the question? Did you run out of time? Were you rushing? By allowing yourself to understand your mistakes, it will really help you to avoid making them again in the future. Now some quick final general tips for you for the decision making section of the UCAT. First of all, use your whiteboard. It can be very useful to help remember numbers or as I mentioned earlier, to help visualize information that is given in quite a complex puzzle. Brush up on your mental maths. There are several Venn diagram like questions that come up on decision making. So being able to kind of add, subtract and manipulate numbers in your head quickly can really help you. It can also help save a lot of time compared to you know using the calculator on the UCAT program. I know it's easier said than done, but my next tip is to not stress under the pressure. Decision making is not as time pressured as other sections. Now don't get me wrong, it is still time pressured, the whole of the UCAT exam is, but in my opinion, it's a lot calmer than other sections like quantitative reasoning or verbal reasoning, for example. So make sure you take your time within reason, of course, to read and understand the information and the question that is given. Overall, decision making can be quite difficult and definitely hurt your brain. But with enough practice and of course the right strategies, you should be able to improve significantly to get the score that you want. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you the best of luck in your preparation. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or contact me with the information in the description below.